Hi guys, Rian here and today I'll be doing a complete guide on our favourite dazzling waifu. Yoimiya may not be the fan favourite among the Genshin meta community, but for the cultured waifu collectors, she'll always have a spot in our hearts. Let's start by reviewing her kit. Yoimiya is by far one of the simplest characters in the game, with no complicated game mechanics. Yoimiya is a main DPS that is centred around doing normal attacks. Her normal attacks are pretty basic, with a 5 hit pattern. This, combined with her elemental skill, makes up a large majority of her kit. Yoimiya's optimal attack pattern is 5 normal attacks and dash cancel. The main reason is because the last attack has a very long delay. Within her elemental skill duration, Yoimiya will be able to do this attack pattern 3 times if executed properly. Yoimiya also has a unique charge attack that generates multiple kindling arrows. These kindling arrows are basically homing missiles that will track onto the nearest target. The longer you hold on to her charge attack, the more kindling arrows you can generate, up to a maximum of 3. Sadly, the damage scaling of these kindling arrows are quite low and isn't really optimal for Yoimiya to use it if you're looking to kill the enemies fast. Although Yoimiya has a unique charge attack, it isn't as strong as Ganyu's damage scaling that makes it her defining characteristic. Next is Yoimiya's elemental skill, Niwabi Fire Dance. A large majority of her kit revolves around this elemental skill that converts her normal attacks into pyro attacks. At the same time, the damage of her normal attacks is also increased by a certain percentage, depending on your talent level. So basically, most of her damage comes from activating her skill and just fire away, like a machine gun. Also, do note when she is in this state, she is unable to generate the bonus kindling arrows from her charge attacks. However, if you have Constellation 6, your normal attacks have a 50% chance of firing an extra kindling arrow. Yoimiya's elemental skill lasts for 10 seconds and have a cooldown of 18 seconds which means she has around 45% downtime, which is pretty long. However, the cooldown can be reduced if you have Constellation 4, more on that later. During her Niwabi Fire Dance, Yoimiya has a passive that increases her pyro bonus damage by 2% every time she lands a normal attack. This can stack up to 10 times, giving Yoimiya an increasing pyro bonus damage up to 20%. Lastly, we have Yoimiya's Elemental Burst, Ryukin's Sexy Fridge that shoots a firework dealing AoE pyro damage. As compared to most pyro DPS, the damage of her Elemental Burst is pretty low. However, that is not where most of the damage comes from. Ryukin's Sexy Fridge also marks an enemy with Aura's Blaze, which is where most of her Elemental Burst damage comes from. When an enemy marked by Aura's Blaze is hit by a party member other than Yoimiya, an additional AoE pyro explosion occurs. This can happen once every 2 seconds over a duration of 10 seconds. This makes Yoimiya a perfect pair with any sub-DPS that can deal off-field damage, such as Singchu, Beidou, Fischl, and Elbedo. If the target mark with Aura's Blaze dies before the 10 seconds is up, the mark will be passed on to the nearby enemy. Yoimiya also has a passive talent that increases her party member's attack by 10% after she uses her elemental burst. This passive kind of confused a lot of players because it seems like Yoimiya should use her elemental skill and only activate her elemental burst before she swap out so her sub DPS can benefit from this passive. Of course you can do that, but there is another attack pattern that also works. Yoimiya can start with her elemental burst, then switch to a sub DPS such as Sengchu or Beidou and use their elemental skill and benefit from the bonus attack, then switch back to Yoimiya and use her elemental skill. This way, her sub DPS is able to get the bonus attack while dishing out the damage during the time Yoimiya is on field. You just need to be careful if you are using the Shimenawa set with this attack pattern. After using her elemental burst, Yoimiya will be stuck with zero energy and the Shimenawa passive will not be activated unless your sub DPS managed to generate 15 energy for Yoimiya. You will not encounter this issue if you are using any other artifact set such as the Crimson Gladiator set. This brings me to her team compositions. As I said earlier, Yoimiya is a character that benefits the most with sub DPS that can deal off field damage. Characters like Beidou, Fischl, Electro Traveler, Singchu, Xiangling, Ganyu, Rosaria, Elbedo, and Zhongli are fine candidates. You can even stack multiple sub DPS on the same team. I would say there are four main builds that work very well with Yoimiya. They are the Pyro Shred team, Overload team, Vaporize team, and the Pyro Geo team. As for the melt team with Rosaria and Ganyu, well, it kind of works but I didn't really feel it was very impactful as compared to the other teams. Let us start with the Pyro Shred team. The two main players in this team are Kazuha and Burnett. I think you know where this is going. Both Kazuha with Viridescent and Full Elemental Mastery build combined with Burnett's burst is able to straight up double Yoimiya's Pyro damage. Burnett is also a very good pair with Yoimiya because they both benefit from the Pyro resonance. 
Burnett can also act as a battery for Yoimiya to negate the Shimenawa artifact energy drain. As for Kazuha, he is able to apply Viridescent debuff while his Elemental Burst deals off-field damage to trigger the Aura's Blaze from Yoimiya's Elemental Burst. But if you don't have Kazuha, the new Animal Ninja Sayu or Sucrose are also very good candidates. As for the final party member, you can either put in Zhongli for even more Pyro Shred or Xiangling or Albedo for even more consistent off-field DPS. The Pyro Shred doesn't care too much about elemental reactions, so using the Lava Walker set on Yoimiya is also a possibility. The second team composition which is very similar to the Pyro Shred team is the Double Geo Double Pyro team. Instead of using a Viridescent support, Zhongli instead will be the core member. For this team, you are going to want to abuse the Pyro and Geo resonance. The ideal team members for this is Yoimiya, Zhongli, Albedo and Burnett. Of course you can switch Albedo with Geo Traveler and Burnett with Xiangling, but I find the issue with that is Xiangling generates too little Pyro energy particles for the team. Burnett is just a better option. Next is the Vaporize team and this is pretty much just Seng Chu and Yoimiya. Yes, I know Yoimiya has an internal cooldown and cannot Vaporize every single attack. However, both of them still make a very good team. Seng Chu is a character that works really well with anyone who is constantly doing normal attacks. Seng Chu's Elemental Burst is able to summon up to 60 Rain Swords and not many characters can maximize this when they are busy using their Elemental Skill, Elemental Burst and dashing around. A very good example is Ayaka. Although she is a very good pair with Seng Chu, Ayaka is only able to summon around 32 Rain Swords because most of her time is wasted on other actions and not actually doing normal attacks. But for Yoimiya, besides activating her elemental skill, all you want to do is just spam left click. This enables Seng Chu's DPS to be higher on the Yoimiya team as compared to Ayaka's team. As for the party members 3 and 4, it is very flexible and all comes down to who you want to play. One option is combining Yoimiya Seng Chu with an Electro sub DPS such as Beidou or Fischl. Another option is Yoimiya Seng Chu with a Cryo sub DPS such as Rosaria or Ganyu. You may think, this team comp is a total mess when it comes to elemental reactions and this is going to piss off a lot of meta gamers. But I think the order of elemental reactions isn't important for Yoimiya. Hear me out, Yoimiya and Seng Chu aren't characters like Hu Tao or Chao that deal 200k one shot damage. Both of them are characters with very low damage numbers at a very high frequency. This is why you don't need to be so strict and force yourself to do Vaporize only. As long as you are doing elemental reactions consistently, the damage will eventually add up. The final team for Yoimiya is an Overload team and after playtesting her, I'm very confident this team is a legit team comp. Before Yoimiya was released, I find most Overload team composition is very subpar and inefficient. This is because Overload often knocks the target around and causes the Pyro DPS to miss their attacks. Take a look at Yanfei for example. For Yanfei to build up her charge attacks, you need to use normal attacks. However, when she uses normal attacks with Fischl or Beidou, the Overload reaction knocks the enemy away, making her charge attack that has a long delay miss. This is why I was never fond of the Overload teams. But with Yoimiya, her normal attacks doesn't miss the target and can even shoot them in mid-air to juggle them. This makes Overload actually really fun to play with while dealing a buttload of damage. For the Overload team, I prefer to run a double Electro team. This is mainly because I want Beidou to have her Elemental Burst ready at all times. When Beidou's Elemental Burst is on cooldown, I swap the Fischl and use Oz and I just keep repeating this process. The amount of energy generated in this team is more than enough. As for the fourth and final member, you can even add in Sucrose or Venti for crowd control and Viridescent debuff. Because Overload keeps knocking everyone around, crowd control comes in very handy. But if you're facing larger targets, the fourth slot can basically be anyone. Well, that's about it for the team comps for Yoimiya. As long as you pair her with a sub DPS that can deal off-field damage, she's good to go. 
Next, we move on to her weapons and I've done a series of DPS calculations to determine her weapons from best to worst. To no one's surprise, Thundering Pulse is her best in slot. In fact, an R1 Thundering Pulse outperforms even an R5 Skyward Hub. This is because the Thundering Pulse scales so nicely with normal attacks and this is just perfect with Yoimiya. I'm going to skip the Refinement 5 5 star bows because most people who have these are whales and they are most likely going to get the Thundering Pulse anyway. If this is the case, an R5 Black Cliff War Bow will be the next best weapon. However, this is only if you have 3 stacks. If you do not have all 3 stacks, your DPS is somewhere in between up here and down here. Then we have an R5 Rust and I would say this is a more consistent weapon than the Black Cliff War Bow. An R5 Rust even outperforms an R1 Skyward Hub, which is next on the list. After the Skyward Hub, we have an R5 Royal Bow and because of the randomness of this weapon, I've only taken into account 2 stacks instead of the maximum of 5 stacks. But even with 2 stacks, the R5 Royal Bow performed pretty well. Next on the list, we have an R5 Prototype Crescent and an R5 Hamayumi. Although both of them have very similar DPS, this is only after you activate their passive. This makes the Prototype Crescent an unrealistic weapon for Yoimiya. Unless you are going to do charge attacks to hit the weak spot before using her elemental skill, Yoimiya isn't going to benefit from the Prototype Crescent's passive. However, the Hamayumi's passive fits perfectly with Yoimiya's playstyle. The only thing you need to watch out for is if you are using the Shiminawa set. Activating the Shiminawa set will halve the effect of Hamayumi. This is why I recommend using the Crimson Gladiator set with Hamayumi. After the R5 Hamayumi, we have an R1 Amos Bow. Then the same order of Black Cliff War Bow, Rust, Royal Bow and Hamayumi repeats, but a refinement one. Although you see the Black Cliff War Bow ranking higher than the Rust, this is only if you have 3 stacks. In general, the Rust will be a much better choice. As for Yoimiya's artifact, if you are looking for the highest damage output, Shimenawa is going to perform the best. However, you will need to always look out for Shimenawa's passive and never activate her elemental skill if you do not have 15 energy, or else her DPS is going to drop significantly. If you plan to use her elemental burst at the start of the fight to maintain the Aura's blaze effect, make sure you also have a pyro battery that can supply 15 energy quick enough before using your elemental skill. If you do not have a strong pyro battery, I will only recommend using her elemental burst at the end of her attack pattern. But if you do not want to deal with all the hassle from Shimenawa, Crimson Witch Gladiator will be the next best set. It doesn't necessarily have to be Gladiators. You can also use Crimson Witch Shimenawa. They both are the same thing. As I said earlier, this set is also better if you are using the Hamayumi. As for the Crimson Witch 4P set, it is only good if you are running an Overload team or Vaporize team. Crimson Witch 4P's effect doesn't work on the Pyro Shred team or Pyro Geo team. Instead, the Lava Walker will be a better option for those teams. Finally, I will only touch briefly on the constellations. As usual, I'm just going to put out a disclaimer. These are just my opinion from playing with constellation 0 Yoimiya. Constellation 1 increases the duration of Aura's Blaze when using Ryukin's Sexy Fridge. This is basically 2 extra ticks. If you are building Crimson Witch set, this damage can be quite substantial. But if you are using the Rust and Shimenawa set, the damage bonus isn't too great. Constellation 1 also adds a bonus 20% attack when an enemy affected by Aura's Blaze is killed. This attack boost lasts for 20 seconds which is a very long buff duration. Constellation 2 is also very nice. This is basically just 25% pyro bonus damage for Yoimiya because it's pretty easy to score a crit if you build a character right. Constellation 4 decreases her elemental skill cooldown by 1.2 seconds every time her Aura's Blaze triggers. This constellation is pretty handy and this is why I emphasize pairing Yoimiya with a sub DPS that can deal off field damage. And finally, her constellation 6 allows a normal attack to have a 50% chance of firing an extra kindling arrow. This kindling arrow is only 60% of its original damage and I don't find it particularly strong. If anyone has C6 Yoimiya, let me know how it feels. Well, that is it for everything you need to know about Yoimiya. Although she isn't a meta-defining character, she certainly is fun and easy to play. She's a perfect character for casual gamers who just don't want to think so much when they play a game and just want to left-click all the way. To me, she's the polar opposite of Ganyu. Yoimiya is pyro while Ganyu is cryo. Yoimiya does many instances of small damage while Ganyu is slow but have high damage numbers. Yoimiya is unga bunga and just spam left-click while Ganyu is technical and rewards you with perfect timing. It doesn't mean if you love Ganyu, you are going to hate Yoimiya. I just think there's a character for everyone out there. 
I wish everyone all the best for rolling for Yoimiya. If you already wrote for her, let me know how does her gameplay feel and does meta really matter? I'm genuinely curious. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. As always, thank you for watching.